I mean, sorry, my, I have, take two. Okay, mm, question number eight, spring awakening. Uh, this, this, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm fine, guys. I'm emotionally stable. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another bonus episode of Bookish Babbles. Um, you know, another just random fun episode while i figure out how to get everyone together to talk about the mocking jay movies don't mind me um i'm also recording this on easter so uh happy belated easter because obviously this episode will come out uh after easter has already passed um had a nice uh, Easter breakfast with my family, ate way too much food, and I also saw the uh, Super uh, Mario Brothers movie with my brother this afternoon, and I mean, and it was surprisingly, I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected, like I was fully invested in Peach because I love Anya Taylor Joy and I loved her take on Peach and I love what they did with her in this with in this movie so that's why i was going to see the movie for i also really end up loving luigi and of course the highlight of pers- performance of the movie was jack black as bowser he was he, he was the best um and you know it's a good time especially and the an- and i thought the animation looked great but yeah those, those are my thoughts i don't have any strong opinions on the mario movies except um maybe a different actor as Mario because while the voice acting wasn't as bad as it was in some of the trailers that I saw circling on uh, like TikTok um it was still clearly you know it, it was Chris Pratt like I could still hear the Chris Pratt in his voice and I thought he didn't suit Mario very well but whatever this is, we're not talking about the Mario Brothers movie this episode guys um we're focusing on books. This is this because this is a book podcast. Speaking of books, my library tour is eventually coming on my U- on the YouTube channel. Um, but we did some uh, furniture rearranging yesterday in this room. Um, so and it looks great. So you so the hence why um organizing hasn't um been completed yet. Also. Last week on Thursday, I lost my voice because I was sick. Like, allergies were, like, kicking my butt, and then I lost my voice. Allergies are still kind of kicking my butt because I'm very congested right now. So I apologized for my vocal quality this episode. But um, you know what allergies mean? Uh, Spring is here. (laughs) perfect transition allison Uh, so yeah today we're doing the spring has sprung book tag created by i don't know i'll link the creator in the show notes as well as the person whose video i use to get the questions for this tag you know just quick a nice quick uh 10 question tag to do this week because i'm tired like I don't know why. I suddenly just got tired as I sat down to record naturally. So here we are. And I don't want to do much this week because I know work is going to be crazy this week too. But anyway, so let's just dive into the questions because, you know, it's Easter. It's springtime. This is the perfect time to do this sort of tag. So anyway, I have also not prepared. I'm going to be answering these questions on the fly. Uh, This should be interesting. Uh, Buckle up, everyone. (laughs) oh boy anyway okay question number one flowers all the flowers we remember are blooming again pick a book that's a fresh take on a retelling Ooh. okay um looking around at my bookshelf guys like i know i got retellings here most of my retellings are actually at my bedroom at my house ah Oh, what's it called? Where is it? Uh, I know it's on my shelf somewhere. Uh, I'm too lazy to get up. Also, my computer's just on my lap. I'm just sitting on my chair. I don't want to get up. Uh, oh, 
There it is. Uh, Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. It's a standalone uh, fantasy novel that focuses, that's like a King Arthur retelling. And it focuses on, what's her name? Uh, Lady Elaine, who's a psychic. Like, she's a character that I feel like doesn't get highlighted a lot in um, King Arthur retellings. And even in the TV show Merlin, which is currently all over my For You page on TikTok, and I'm absolutely not complaining about that, because that was my comfort show in, like, late high school, early college, or one of them. Like, that and Once Upon a Time were my comfort shows. I mean, Once Upon a Time still is. But anyway, not what we're talking about right now. But yeah, um, Half Sick of Shadows. It was really good. Um, And like I said, Elaine, um, I feel like she's a character that doesn't get a lot of attention and even in Merlin I feel like um she was in maybe one two episode tops and and I love the take on Guinevere and Lancelot and just like the magic I'm always fascinated with magic systems where a character can see the future because there's so many different takes I feel like you can do and I always always enjoy it but yeah Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian recommend all right, um, question number two, uh, Cadbury mini eggs, obviously the superior springtime candy of choice, no, uh, pick a book that you consider to be a sweet treat, ooh, um, again guys, I did not prepare this at all, I'm just staring at my shelves right now, hoping to come up with an answer, uh, a sweet treat um you know i'm gonna go with the uh to all the boys i've loved before uh series because it's such a sweet happy lovable series as well as the movies although actually i haven't watched the third movie whoops um and i haven't watched the second one since it came out i watched the first one on repeat so first one definitely the best of the ones i've seen so far but like i really enjoy I really enjoy all the books in the trilogy, and Lara Jean uh, bakes, so there's a lot of, you know, sweet treats that are made, and I love to bake too, so hell yeah, Lara Jean. (laughs) So yeah, uh, yeah, that series, To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han, that's a sweet treat. Okay, uh, next question. Okay, question number three, allergies, hey, we were talking about that earlier, um, Seasonal allergies often make your eyes water. Pick a book that made you cry. Oh, um, plenty of books. Why am I blanking on every single one? Uh, I'll say Chain of Thorns. That's all I'll say on that matter, because I'm still reeling from what happened there. Oh, you know what else I'm reeling from? Um, what happened at the end of season two of Bad Batch. If you watch that show, you know why do I love Star Wars when it always causes me emotional damage. Um, if anyone, uh, knows where David Filoni lives, please, uh, tell me so I can track him down and send him my therapy bills. <laughs> Yeah, f- fucking Filoni. Um, okay, you guys know that scene um, in Star Wars Rebels where um, Maul is like in the deserts of Tatooine, obviously, because he's looking for Kenobi because he's obsessed with Kenobi like I am. Um, and he screams at the sky, Kenobi! That scene. Can someone get uh, Sam Wintour to um, like do that in the Maul voice, but instead of screaming Kenobi, scream Filoni? Because... I, f- I feel like that's accurate every time now something happens in star wars when <laughs> i feel attacked emotionally i blame david filoni even even for things even when i was rewatching, um ironically kenobi and i was feeling attacked emotionally i was like fuck you david filoni even though i'm pretty sure he had the least amount involvement in that show and like most of of the credit goes to like Deborah Chow. Even then, even when he's not fully in charge of a Star Wars project, I blame him for my emotional damage. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, chain chain of thorns. And you know what? I'll be nice, Filoni. I'll send half my therapy bills to you and the other half to Cassandra Clare. You both can afford it, I think. Okay, what's the next question? Okay, number four, spring cleaning. Again, ironically, because we were cleaning this room yesterday so I could organize the library. Anyway, um, spring cleaning, out with the old and in with the new. Pick a book to unhaul. Oh, um, 
uh, what's it called? Um, the Y fantasy book I read that's the first in a series. It was, like, kind of mediocre. I don't think I'll continue. Uh, A Ruinous Fate. I don't remember the author's name, and I don't care to get up and look for it right now, because I tossed it somewhere. <laughs> I really do need to unhaul a few books. I should donate them to some of my little, the because we have some little libraries in the area. Those are good to drop off at. Anyway, uh, moving on. Next question. Uh, number five, spring break. It's the perfect time for an adventure. Pick a book involving a road trip. Okay, I can I don't think I've read very many, uh, like, road trip books. Um, uh, you know what? I was, I was gonna say The People We Keep, but I feel like I talked about that book recently. You know what book I don't think I've really talked about on this podcast? Um, I read this my senior year of high school. Um, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. That, that book involves a road trip, and it was an excellent road trip. And you know what? It can make a good movie, too. That's a book I feel like I'm kind of surprised no one's made a movie out of because I feel like it's the perfect setup because all you really need is, like, a kind of smallish cast, a car, and places to drive. <laughs> and it would be a good time. It would be a good movie. So, yeah, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. Uh, two characters named Amy and Roger. They have to drive across country pretty basic that's all you really need to know about the book and yeah that's it okay next question um number six oh my god i didn't clearly i didn't look at all the questions ahead of time guys number six mating season (laughs) oh dear uh it's that time of year in the animal kingdom to uh make some babies uh pick a book with some smutty delights okay i don't really read smut guys like more power to you if smut is your thing um but it's not my thing so this is awkward um i'll just say a court of mist and fury because i did read those books in high school and that's all i'll say about that moving on um okay number seven rainbows i just feel like spring is made of freaking rainbows pick a book featuring uh lgbtqia plus characters uh more than happy to um just glancing around at my shelf okay just looking at my i just my my eyes just went straight to my section on greek mythology and i'm looking at song of achilles because obviously um I mean, I've also got Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. Duh. Got um, I got gender queer uh, for obvious reasons. That would that would qualify. Um. Ooh. Did you know, uh, Ask the Passengers by A. S. King. That is the first uh book I ever read. Uh, because I read it back in high school. It's a YA contemporary. A. S. King. I feel like is really underrated YA author, but um. As the Passengers, it was my first time ever reading a book with a main character who was a lesbian. Like, because, you know, it was, what, 2014? Like, pretty much all the characters I was, main characters I was reading were of the, of the uh, hetero variety. So that was my first time reading where the main, main character was a, le- was a lesbian. Actually, the first time I re- ever read a book where a major character was um not straight was uh city of bones by cassandra clare because like that's a story i will tell another day one day in like you know 50 years when i'm covering the shadow hunter chronicles that will be a wild time because <laughs> who knows maybe you know if that series is ever done because we still need the wicked power series and who knows if she'll stop there but yeah, um, Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. That's a really gr- that's a, that I need to reread that because I barely remember what happens in that book. But it would th- that'd be a really interesting reread. Okay, moving on. So question number eight: Spring Awakening, which is a fantastic uh, musical. If anyone needs a uh, Wenla or uh, it's Elsa. I clearly haven't seen in a while, but uh, if anyone's casting, let me know. Uh, Okay, so Spring Awakening. Pick a book that is also uh, filled with completely dysfunctional characters. Well, um, let me see. I think I can think of a few. 
I mean, why am I thinking of the crows right now? <laughs> like, that's all I can think of. The crows from Six of Crows. They are all dysfunctional and great. I love them dearly. Um, yeah, I'm tired. My brain can't work. Because this is the phenomenon. This is why I have to prepare for these episodes, guys. Because it's like as soon as you're asked a question, you just... Uh, like, people ask like, ask me all the time, like, oh, what are some great books you've read recently? And suddenly I forgot, I forget every single book I have ever read in my entire life. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, moving on. Uh, number nine. In Like a Lion, Out Like a Lamb. Pick a book series that didn't get better as it progressed. Ooh, um... I get... Uh, I guess the Court of Thorns and Roses series, because book one was good, book two was really, really good, uh, book three was okay, like, I barely remember what happened in book three, and then it's just continuing, so I don't know. No, again, I'm just, I haven't read a ton of series in recent years, so I'm blanking on every series I've ever read, because I genuinely really enjoy series that I read. Oh, actually, you know what series, like, was still really good, but kind of, uh, the quality just went down a little bit after a certain point? Uh, it was a manga series, a Death Note, because Death Note is fantastic. I still highly recommend it. It's just after a certain character left the series i won't say how they got written out of the series but after that character left um i don't know it just i feel like it peaked the series peaked when that character left and mind you the series was still fantastic and still had a really good ending but it just it just wasn't the same after that character left um i think most people would agree with me but i still highly recommend death note and it's not a and it's not a super long uh manga series either especially if you get the like um special like black sprayed page volumes like i did because then it's like six volumes instead of 12 and it, and they're beautiful for your shelves Ooh, that's another series i should have brought over here to put on my shelf because i have a manga shelf going on over here anyway uh moving on okay i'm gonna need a second manga shelf soon because yona is like 30 something volumes and as far as i know still ongoing Okay, where am I? I don't know. Okay, um, number 10, which is, oh, just, uh, Fun in the Sun, Tag some friends, all of you, you're all tagged. If you're listening, you're tagged. I am too tired to think of anything right now. Seriously, why am I tired right now? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. I got nothing else to say. Um, Allison editing, don't forget to link people in the show notes the videos you used but anyway guys thank you so much for listening um mocking j type episodes are coming uh things in the show notes as usual don't forget to rate like comment all that good stuff uh reminder if you are listening on apple podcast and you leave a review with a five star rating i will read it out loud on the show um but but again but again I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me just ramble into the void, and um, hope you all have a great day slash night and I'll talk to you next time bye.